today's session we'll talk about uh, i am the basic components the major challenges we would see in real time and the troubleshooting steps when it comes to i am as a service so the common thing i would expect you would already know is we have component called the user which is individual user either you provide as success or a permission go via console you would be having groups which will be consisting of more than one user so that we can map the permissions of the same team or same type of users so it should be like grouped together which would be like groups then you would be having roles which would be which any user or groups can assume this role for a temporary part so these are the generic ones where are like tons and tons of resources available but what we want to do is the major things which people would struggle about is finding the right permission set or if they get blocked due to any specific reason like what is stopping them to proceed further and people would ask like this is more time consuming so give me admin permission or like give me more wider permission and it's always a clash between the management or the admin team who manages the aws account versus uh, the development or devops team because they couldn't find the right permission or like they think it takes more time to get the right permission set versus following the best practice of going more granular level so the best way is to come up with the ideal permission set is list down what action you would perform so let's say if i want to create an s3 bucket so first we want to come with a proper let's say ui based action like what are the things that would be occur if i do the same action via ui right so that would be the first optimal way so if we go to the say i'm going to log into the account let's say if i want to create an s3 bucket so what are the steps i'm going to do so be navigating into the three ui right so that's what you would do and when i go into the s3 before even i start creating the one i'm going to see all the existing buckets in the ui which means there is an api call happening backend which is fetching all the bucket that belongs to my account and then i go to the create bucket and perform like various steps so now try to relate it with the i am policy so what you can do is you can go to this ui i am policy generator you have called i am policy and you have effect allow and deny so and then you have the actions generally action wise you can easily identify like you have get you have list you have describe so these common words would be following for the read permission one and then you have create and update and delete so these are the keywords which would begin for updation or modifying any resource so in our we are going to the console and we could see the list of buckets and then we could able to create it so if i go to the same policy bucket if i see whatever the things like add permission delete message all are like might be not even required right so first you need to choose a service so it is like s3 and then if i go to s3 about multi part upload create grant request so these are the generic things which won't be required but you see like we have create bucket so which means i would need create bucket you can also see about like the get bucket acl and get bucket location so you can see with the filter of part like i might need to read the bucket policy you can focus on what the action is going to be is it going to be false under any of the read permission or your action is going to be false as part of the edit or update permission right so this is first thing you can start with it and then you have something called resource arn so okay let's before going with the resource arn let's go with the start and if you go with add statement generate policy so this is how uh, an iam policy is going to look like in generic so if i take this and let me paste it here and let's go one by one like what we are trying to say it in the iam policy so the first thing we have here is so it's nothing but an uh, unique statement id it's for our document purpose right so in future if someone is coming and reading you are uh, you see they would need to know what this specific policy statement performs so you can keep anything it can be like wasn or you can keep as the create policy so that in future if any of your team member comes they know what exactly this statement is meant to do and then you would see something called effect so effect generally has two values either as an allow deny so if the specific conditions matches whatever the either it can be an action or it can be a conditions matches then what should be the end result uh, success the a call and get it serve the proper response or do you want to completely deny it that's where this effect thing comes into picture and then you have something called resource so resources if you see here we are saying specific actions you performed right 
So we are saying like you can create a, a bucket, you can get the bucket policy. There will be certain scenarios where you can update a bucket policy, delete the bucket. So then we can't just provide like, okay, this policy can like delete the bucket or can update the bucket policy. If you want to restrict a specific uh, resource to be deleted, there comes the uh, resource. So generally, if you see, you star, which means wildcard, which, which is like any S3 bucket in the account can be allowed to perform this specific action. Whereas if you use a specific ARN, so you can fetch the ARN of the resource from here. So if you go to the console, you can see the copy AR. So I can replace a star with the ARN of the bucket. And on scenarios like S3, you can even go like a slash star or slash folder wise. You can go even further deep into it when it comes to resource like S3. So what will be useful is, let's say I want to give a permission to create or update or delete all the bucket except a specific resource. So then I can add two conditions, one statement to allow specific action. And then I can add one more statement statement deny specific to a resource so how i am role is going to work is the most least permission will be done so if one deny is there so deny takes the highest precedence over any allow condition okay so by default it's going to be denied plus if any explicit deny is going to be there then that's going to take precedence okay so when it comes to the i am policy wise our condition is going to work if no action specified then the default uh, action is denied if explicit allow is specified then the action is going to be allow if explicit allow and deny is specified then it's going to be deny because you would need to go with the least specified policy okay so now the major concern comes is as the assistant grows as the policy grows you would never end up knowing like uh, where my uh, getting blocked or i might not be aware what is the exact root cause of blocking part so let's play with it so what we will go is i am policy or the i am user and we tried creating a user called e with iphone demo and if you see there is no policy has been mapped so it's just one i am user change password that's ignore it but then there is no specific policy has been mapped right so you see no other uh, permission has been provided so as a user i logged in over here as e with i and if i go to s3 and if i try to see there is nothing over here listed right so if i go to buckets first thing you see is like it gives a public you don't have permission to list buckets right so that's the first action you would see as a user so now what action i would need to get the permission to list the buckets and we don't know like there can be multiple reasons to get this error right so the first way of troubleshooting is there is something called cloud trail where API in your account gets logged. So if in this case, right, if someone is coming like I couldn't do action in S, I want to proceed further. So what I would do is you go to cloud trail, go to event history and you would see here there any other like events being observed over here. So if you see there is something called change password is there. So what can be the reason for it? Now there is something called as I am policy simulator is there. So if I go with I am policy simulator, we can test what are the reasons might be there for the specific user or specific role not having permission to it. You just need to log into the access as part of the admin or account management part. And then you can go here and you can choose which person you want to test it. And then you can like what action you are going to try to do it. So you are going to to get get s3 bucket right so let's say the action you are going to do is get get bucket policy or whatever it is so now if i do the run simulation first thing it would see like implicitly denied no matching statement found so the first way to is you are trying to list the buckets so you would go here and then you try to simulate with list bucket so trying to do a list bucket and then you do the simulation it will give you a clear idea like why this specific action is so it means there is no matching statement found to list the bucket so what you can do is you can go here permissions and then you can add permission create inline policy for example let's create a permission for s3 and then what action you want to do you want to just do list bucket resource for now let's keep all and then you go with next and let's create a policy so s3 assess so i'm creating a custom policy for now to 
get this accent sorted. So now if I go to the user and if I just retry the call, maybe like by refresh, the S3 permissions would get reflected. So let's see why it's not reflected. Okay, the S3 policy is created, the S3 access. So now we have the S3 list bucket is being mapped. Now if I go into the user, the specific user, now after your administrative permission to S3 list all my buckets. You see there is a different parts. There is a list buckets and list all my buckets. Let's see. See list all my buckets, there's another one. So there's list bucket and list all my buckets. So two API calls are there. And let's try to do the save changes. And if I do refresh it, boom. So now we could be able to see the permission. So first thing is either in terms of response or irrespective of CLI or via the console, we would see what exact error is been coming from for what. Now if we proceed further in terms of like create bucket, for example, let's say I'd keep it as EV hyphen demo and let's create a bucket. It says already exist one, two, three and create bucket. So now again, you see each error uh, you would get will give you like the another. What is the API call you're going to trying to do and uh, why it has been missed. So that part has been like simplified in this way. Other straight away going into a way of going directly and creating the wider level policy, you can try to take this approach of step by step approach. Okay, I need to go into the console and do this, add and add. So the generic way people follow in organization is they will be having a non product account or a playground account where they have the luxury to play with wider permission. And then in the wider permission, they go one by one action to see what are the steps being done. I'll show an example. So now as an admin account, I have permission to create this three bucket. So let's say this has a scenario of a production account. What I can do, I can go to S3, I can create a bucket and let's say I'll keep it as EV and demo iPhone one, two, three, and let's create a bucket, right? So I did couple of actions now, like three to four API calls being done. And all those actions will be recorded in the cloud trail. So if I go to the event history and we refresh this, we just need to be in the same region. So it's in which region we created the bucket, North Virginia. So you just ensure that your region is same in the North Virginia. And then you would see, you see like I tried, this is a username, tried creating the list buckets. And as the admin, like what are the things we tried doing it in terms of including the timeline wise, like at this specific part, the user tried doing it. And you can see there is a bit latency, but that's an assess denied. So I tried creating the list bucket at the time. And then since there was no valid policy, the assess be denied. So now it's reflecting over here. So with bit of latency, you would still see all the API calls, which is done by each and every user, irrespective of a valid policy or not policy, it will be recorded here. So you can come to the event history and then see what API calls the user is trying to do, perform and is it been happening or not. If you see, this is the one like of uh, the tech page at gmail.com, which I'm currently using it as a username. And so these are the things which I tried doing the login part, right? So if you wait for a few more minutes, we would see like the A calls, which we tried doing it for the uh, S3 bucket creation also will be listed over here. So by which we can track what are the API calls being triggered? So in this case, for the list bucket, I tried creating the as an event source and I tried from the specific public IP and I tried triggering the XYZ action. So all those things will be logged here. So as the admin part, you can try to see what are the permissions needed or the actual cost. Two things we can uh, backtrack. One using trail uh, event history to see uh, what is stopping them and the IAM policy simulator to assume as a specific user and see what is stopping them. The things get tricky because it's in the organization wise, if you're having a multi account organization, you may having one major root account and multiple sub OU, the organization units, and each OU will be having sub accounts listed. The organizations would be mapping something called service control policy, SCP, which is what are the actions are allowed or what are the actions are not allowed under the specific accounts. So they would generally map it on the top organization unit. So any account existing under the organization unit or any future account even created in the specific organization unit, whatever the action being restricted under the SCP, which is mapped to the, will get denied. So if you just stick with the IAM policy of the user troubleshooting and you try to see like my IAM policy is being existing, but why it's getting blocked. So then that can be another reason it should be 
the SCP because even if an action is allowed inside the account, but if it is getting restricted with the service control policy, then still the deny action will be applied. So those kind of things can be get captured using the IAM policy simulator because your policy would be assumed or would be allowed, but then it would clearly mention here if it is denied due to a service control policy of specific part. There is one more tricky thing can also happen, which is so far what we are talking about is the policy map to specific user but when it comes to the IAM policies the IAM policies also have something called resource policy so resource policy is the policy that is mapped to specific services so you have uh, s3 bucket policy so that would be comes under resource policy you have uh, KMS which is like uh, the key permission which we have seen in past videos so these things are the you see that is mapped to a source or a service in the AWS and this specific resource also can say who can perform a specific action so let's say a user is there and if the user I am policy says is for updating a permission or stuff but then in the resource policy if they say for this specific user deny then allow plus deny the deny action gets applied so that can be and those things can't be get captured under the IAM policy simulator so the IAM policy simulator can capture you for any policy is missing any permission is missing or any service control policy is getting blocking your resource those things can become captured under IAM policy simulator or even the event history part but the resource policy if it is de denying those things can't be captured over for which you need to Keep in mind like what are the if does it resource supports any resource specific policy and anything would specifically deny it so let's see like how the resource policy would look like right so if you can also go into the same thing around the i am policy generator so this time instead of i am policy you can try creating a s3 bucket policy the resource you could see like sqsq policy vp point policy so these are the few resources that supports a resource policy at uh, AWS. The policy wise it looks the same but one thing would vary here is what uh, the new parameter called principle. So let's uh, generate the policy and let's try to keep it side by side and see how it looks. So this one is for the I am policy and if I go with this one this is going to be for the resource specific policy and in our case it's going to be for S3 and if you see most of the things look same right. So you have the same action what api calls can be performed the same effect same resource the only new field that is introduced here is something called principle so here principle is the requested so it can be translates to any user any group or any other specific service it can be like a lambda or ec2 all these things would be referred with the ARN okay so any resource or any principle can be referred or uniquely identified using something called ARN which is Amazon resource go with the users for example I want to map it to a specific user EVF and demo then I can go to the specific part and I should be able to get the ARN over here same thing for groups also any resource you create that would be having a specific unique ARN you see you have an ARN for a group same thing for a lambda whatever you create that is going to be a unique resource part. so you would be passing that as a principle so by default if nothing is being specified the default action is denied and if you want to explicitly allow in certain cases for in scenarios like s3 if you want to retrieve a file from the s3 then you would need to pass an explicitly allow condition to letting a specific principles the resource is a destination like to which specific service it gets mapped to and action is like what are the api calls it gets allowed talked about the IAM policy the mapping part the troubleshooting part that is one more scenario which people get stuck which is scenarios of service to service so this is service service or resource to resource let's say you have a condition of ec2 and you would let's say you want to map it to a or like this ec2 should trigger a lambda let's keep this as a scenario so what you would ideally do you would try to create a role map it to a policy and then you would try to map that specific role to the instance but then there can be scenario like that role can be assumed by a specific ec2 and can't be passed by a specific ec2 so let's see how that part is dealt right so if you go to the roles let's try to create a role so now you see when i try to create a role it's asked for like multiple things it's for an is it for an aws is it for AWS account? Is it for a web identity? Is it for a custom trust policy? Or is it for a 
So what's the major difference, right, between the AWS service versus AWS account versus the identity part? So let's go with AWS service because the AWS account part, we are already talked about on scenario of cross account IAM policy, like how this will be helpful. Let's talk about the AWS service. So if you go with AWS service, you see like all the services being listed, which are having a feasibility to assume a role. So in this case, the top, the given a EC2, let's go for EC2. And again, you have like multiple things like what specific EC2, let's go with generic EC2 and the role policy, let's give S3 permission, for example, and go with next. So demo EC2, for example, I'll, I'll create a role. So what is the major difference between the normal role versus this service specific role. The major difference would be something called the trust relationship. If you go into the tab of trust relationship, you would see something called here. So I created a role, who can assume this role? So you might be having a role to perform the action of S3 uh, or trigger a Lambda, but then you tried mapping to EC2, but this time not from EC2, but from a Lambda, and you try to use a Lambda to assume the role, but it won't be get it passed. It would give, you would get the I am deny part. And then the reason would be the trust relationship for the specific service Lambda, it's not get mapped over here. So you can fix it using edit trust policy and you would need to add Lambda. So the AWS service, this is going to be la service name. So in our case, it's going to be Lambda dot is on AWS.com. So you add it and now the same policy can be uh, the same role can be assumed by both EC2 and Lambda, right? So you don't need to go and create a separate role for uh, one role for you, one role for Lambda. In future, if you have some other scenarios like S3 replication, though it's the same S3 action, but still for the S3 replication, you would need to create a role. So you don't need to go and create a separate role for S3. You can come here, edit the trust policy to add S3 as a service, right? Done. So that's how you can simplify and major people would miss this part. They would get confused like, okay, I have a permission, I have a valid set to perform the action. But then why, when I assume the error, it says access denied, right? That won't get captured under the cloud trail or it won't get captured under any of the logs. But people more likely forget that there's something called the trust relationship policy exists. So these are, let's uh, remove the EC2 part from this specific role. Let's go for EC2 instance and I'm going to create a new instance. Let's launch instance. So now I want to provide permission for this specific instance to do some actions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to map a specific role to it. So security, modify am role. And what I'm trying to do is I'm going to this one, right? Which we created the more easy to EV. Right? And let's keep a okay, test. Right? Now I mapped it over here, right? So if I go with this one and what are the policy we have it here? So this can perform all the S3 specific activity. So now if I go to instance, so I logged in over here. So if I try to do AWS S3 LS, so this is a CLA command for uh, listing all the S3 buckets. So it says uh, unable to locate credentials part, right? And it's asking me to configure the uh, credential stuff. But then if you see, I have mapped the IAM role, the demo EC2 EV day, but somehow it's not getting reflected here. And the reason would be in the trust policy, I would need to add the, you see now it came with a different part. So before it said it was not having a specific, uh, like no configuration found, but then now it could able to relate the role and I'm getting a list bucket API call is getting failed. So that's something to deal with the policy. It might not be having the specific get bucket policy. I can go here, for example, let's say, just for simplicity, I'll just add the JS, save changes, and go to this, and if I do, you see, now I could fetch it. So before it was not even identifying the role, even though I mapped it in the console, right? It was reflecting that I have mapped the console and the policy was existing, but then the API call couldn't progress because the trust bit was missing. So once I map the trust and pass the right policy, I could able to perform it. So this thing can't be captured because in IAM policy simulator, you can test just whether the policy is having the valid permission or not, or any SCP is doing it. But then if you, from a beginner level, like I create a role, I create a policy, and in the UI it's been mapped, but then the policy is not working. What's been wrong, right? The thing which would go wrong here is the trust policy. 